Off-road activities are more popular now than ever. It seems like every time you look, someone's trying out a new hobby or starting up an old one, and automakers are following suit with vehicles that are fun, practical, and fuel efficient. The 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz is one such vehicle. It's the company's first open bed offering in the United States, and although it doesn't necessarily have the same towing capacity or outright off-road capability as a mid-sized truck, it will still be very attractive to buyers who need to load up the bed with toys on the weekend, but still want to get good fuel economy and have something that's easy to drive on their daily commutes. I'm gonna show you everything that makes the 2022 Santa Cruz unique, but before I do, be sure to subscribe to the Motor One YouTube channel and find us on all of your favorite social media platforms so that we can keep on bringing you videos like this. The Santa Cruz obviously shares a lot of design inspiration with the Hyundai Tucson SUV, which isn't altogether surprising given that they share a very similar platform. Up front, you see these individual lighting elements that appear invisible and blend in with the rest of the grill until you flip that switch on, and then of course, the headlights are mounted down low on the front bumper, just like they are on the Tucson as well. However, the Santa Cruz does have a few styling features that set it apart ever so slightly, like a squared off and slightly more muscular front bumper that's appropriate to this vehicle's mission as an adventure car. Around the side, that impression continues with these cool beveled wheel arches that actually include a tiny little cartoon graphic of the Santa Cruz itself, which is just one of many little Easter eggs that Hyundai gives you to kind of surprise and delight and give you something more to look at every time you check this thing out. These triangular creases in the sheet metal are an obvious homage to the Hyundai Elantra and the Tucson SUV, and they really contrast very nicely with this thing's muscular, wide-set front fenders to kind of just make this thing a little more exciting to look at. I really enjoy it, and I think they've taken some pretty cool design risks here, and I think they've done a great job. Of course, these bold design decisions don't really mean that much in the case of the Santa Cruz until you actually look at the bed here. This is what really sets the vehicle apart from the Tucson SUV, and this is why you would pick a Santa Cruz over a Tucson. There's a lot of cool features back here, let's check them out. Before we get into the functionality of the bed, I wanna take just a second to talk about some of the styling that they gave this thing to kind of set it apart from the more traditional tall and narrow truck design that you see nowadays. Foremost, there is a nearly full width taillight panel that extends onto the tailgate itself instead of just kind of stopping right here. And that makes this thing look very distinctive from the rear and very attractive. The rear bumper also has a pretty sporty design with a cute little Santa Cruz graphic right there in the middle. And then there's a Santa Cruz stamp across the tailgate that kind of makes it look a little bit more rugged and technical. Loading up cargo is a little bit easier thanks to these corner steps right here on either side of the bumper, as well as a soft opening tailgate. Some models of the Santa Cruz also come standard with a roll-up tonneau cover that retracts automatically like that, giving you full access to the four foot three inch bed. That may not sound like a lot of space, and truthfully it's not, especially compared to a larger mid-sized truck. But Hyundai made the most of the room they had available with an in-bed trunk right here. This is a perfect place to stash stuff that you don't want rolling around with your muddy gear that's in the bed, like a backpack or some clothes or something like that. And it's also drainable and lockable, which means you can use it as a cooler for tailgating or camping or anything like that. It's just another way that shows that Hyundai is thinking about the adventure-oriented consumer. In addition to the trunk, there's also a pair of little cubbies on either side of the bed, which is good for small items that you don't want rolling around. There's also a C-channel with movable cargo tie-downs that kind of allow you to configure your cargo management exactly how you need it to be. And when it's time to go, you just pull this strap, latch the tonneau in place, close the tailgate, and you're on your way. The Hyundai Santa Cruz will be available with two different powertrains. The base one is a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder with 191 horsepower and 181 pound feet. This vehicle, however, uses a turbocharged version of the same engine for 274 horsepower and 311 pound feet. That is a whole lot of grunt for a vehicle this size. It also comes standard with all wheel drive, although on the base engine, front wheel drive will be standard. Unsurprisingly, the Santa Cruz drives a lot like the Tucson SUV. It's very easy to drive around town. The steering is really light. The brakes are easy to modulate, but it kind of provides a vanilla and bland driving experience. It doesn't really thrill you in spite of all of that power under the hood. That said, it is very competent at what it does. It's got plenty of passing power and merging power, which is just what you need in an adventure vehicle like this. You don't necessarily want your compact pickup truck to light your hair on fire. Instead, it needs to be comfortable and good at what it does and have adequate passing power and everything that you need 
without necessarily distracting you with a bone rattling ride. Speaking of, the Santa Cruz has a very quiet cabin as well and a really smooth ride, honestly. Surprisingly for how inexpensive this platform is, the Santa Cruz feels very composed on the freeway and on twisty roads and everything like that. And it can really kind of tackle anything you want to throw at it in terms of broken pavement. It's not sporty by any means, but it's still very capable and a very comfortable vehicle to kind of cruise down the freeway. There's also a lot of tech on board as well. This particular vehicle has a 10.1 inch touchscreen in the center that's very responsive and it runs Hyundai's fantastic infotainment suite. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are standard with a wired connection in this configuration. For some reason, Hyundai relegates the wireless Apple CarPlay to the base 8.25 inch monitor. As you can see, I'm also very comfortable in here as well. I'm six feet tall and I fit behind the wheel just fine. And what's even more impressive is I can sit behind myself in the rear seat as well. So if you've got three friends that you wanna bring along with you on adventures, they will have the space. Overall, I'm really impressed with the Santa Cruz. It's just as easy and comfortable to drive as any average crossover, but it's just got a little more ruggedness and versatility with the open bed in the back, particularly with those pockets on the sides and the trunk in the bottom that you can use as a cooler. It just seems like a really great option for someone who needs a vehicle that can get them out into the wilderness just a little bit, but doesn't necessarily want the added cost and complexity of a dedicated 4x4. It really seems like a best of both worlds option to me. The Hyundai Santa Cruz starts at just under $24,000, and as tested, this vehicle costs $41,500. That is not an insignificant amount of money, particularly since you're giving up the off-road capability that comes in a similarly priced Toyota Tacoma or Nissan Frontier. But then again, no midsize truck on the market is as comfortable or as enjoyable to drive around town as the Santa Cruz, making it a fantastic option for folks who don't need to get into the off-road boonies, but still wanna have a lot of fun outdoors.